Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining the webinar. We're excited to be celebrating Bird Health Awareness Week. This is part of the USDA's Defend the Flock campaign, promoting awareness about the importance of biosecurity and ways to prevent the spread of infectious poultry diseases. We want to help get you and your flocks ready for spring with expanded biosecurity resources. I'm Schneider, known to most as the Chicken Whisperer. Today I'm joined by Dr. Joanna Quinn and Dr. Wood Nicholson of the USDA and Dr. Megan Nichols of the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. Our goal today is to share tips for adding and replacing birds, whether you are just starting out raising poultry or have years of experience, practicing good biosecurity is the best way to keep flocks disease free. Before we get started, we want to let you know that closed captions are available for this program. For anyone who wishes to view real-time streaming captions, type the URL that you see on the slide into your browser. You can use this link at any time during the program. Now we'll take a few minutes to introduce ourselves. I'm Andy Schneider, Editor-in-Chief of Chicken Whisperer Magazine national spokesperson for the USDA APHIS Avian Health Program, author of The Chicken Whisperer to Keeping Chickens, and host of The Backyard Poultry with the Chicken Whisperer web radio show and podcast. Dr. Quinn, please a little bit about yourself. Thanks, Andy. I'm a veterinary medical officer working with USDA. My position is a poultry health specialist and I work in District 1, which is located in the Eastern United States. My educational background is in poultry and avian medicine. In my position, I serve as a resource on poultry health issues, working with state agriculture departments, the commercial poultry industry, and with small farmers. My focus is on avian influenza and disease prevention through biosecurity. I'm happy to be with you today. Thank you, Dr. Quinn. Dr. Wood, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Thanks, Andy. I'm a poultry specialist, veterinary medical officer with USDA, and I also work with Dr. Quinn on the East Coast. My role with USDA is serving as a resource, mainly with poultry issues and avian influenza surveillance, especially with the live bird marketing system, commercial industry, and backyard poultry groups. My areas of interest include poultry, diseases that affect animals and people, and outreach education. I'm happy to be with you today. Thank you, Dr. Wood. Dr. Nichols, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Hello, my name is Megan Nichols, and I'm a public health veterinarian in the Division of Foodborne, Waterborne, and Environmental Diseases at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. I currently work on multi-state outbreaks of Salmonella and E. coli resulting from exposure to animals and pet products. Every year, CDC investigates outbreaks of salmonella illnesses in people linked to backyard poultry. I'm happy to be here today to represent the CDC and to participate in the webinar. Back over to you, Andy. Thank you, Dr. Nichols. Our goal today is to provide information about keeping birds healthy that all flock owners can use, from people who raise chickens and other birds in their backyards, to bird lovers who participate in shows and fairs, to commercial enterprises that raise the poultry and eggs that we consume. We'll cover guidance for adding or replacing poultry, important biosecurity practices for spring, recognizing signs of disease, and using APHIS and CDC resources. If you have questions, feel free to submit them by clicking the Q&A button located at the bottom of your screen. APHIS and CDC veterinarians will answer all questions after the webinar has concluded. The Q&A will be posted along with a recording of this webinar on the APHIS website. 
Be sure to follow the campaign on Facebook and Twitter to find out when the recording is available. We'll share those online destinations at the end of the webinar. While chicks can be purchased from some places year round, many people look to start or grow their flock in the spring. In spring, February through June, you can find the broad collection of breeds from breeders and hatcheries. Also, baby chicks need a warm place that's dry and free from drafts, so spring and early summer are optimal times to start chicks. Whether you're expanding your flock or starting off for the first time, we will share resources and pointers throughout this webinar to help you begin or add to your flock. The best way to keep your flock disease free is to start out with healthy birds. So would please tell us about the National Poultry Improvement Plan, the updated guidance for flock owners who plan to art or add to their flocks this spring, and how biosecurity fits into the process. Thanks, Andy. The National Poultry Improvement Plan, known as NPIP, is a voluntary cooperative federal state industry program established over 80 years ago aimed at improving poultry health. The NPIP was originally established to eradicate a disease called Salmonella pylorum, which was causing 80% mortality in baby chicks. Today, we have essentially eradicated Salmonella pylorum in the commercial poultry industry. With such success in eradicating pylorum disease, the NPIP was extended to include testing and monitoring and surveillance for additional poultry diseases that cause illness, such as avian mycoplasmas, avian influenza, and other types of salmonella. The NPIP has three main objectives. First, the cooperation of the industry, state, and federal government is essential to improve poultry and poultry products through the country by promoting new diagnostic technology. Second, NPIP programs examine the health status of the commercial poultry industry, such as broilers, turkeys, and egg-laying birds, by monitoring their primary and multiplying breeding stock. Finally, the NPIP establishes the standard operating procedures for sample collection, diagnostic tests performed, and the laboratory protocols for conducting tests under the NPIP. Participation in the NPIP is voluntary, and currently all 50 U.S. states participate, as well as Washington, D.C., and one U.S. territory, Puerto Rico. The NPIP is very proud to be supported by so many poultry organizations and associations. You can see some of them listed here in this slide. The NPIP works well with and represents all sectors of the poultry industry. No one is left out. Thank you for the overview, Dr. Wood. Dr. Quinn, please tell us how backyard and commercial growers can use the services and resources available through the MPIP. The MPIP offers numerous benefits. Some of the most significant advantages to being an MPIP participant include being proactive in protecting the health of your flock, through voluntary monitoring and testing, preventing vertical transmission of disease from hen to chick, knowing that you have purchased your birds from NPIP participating flocks that have met very specific disease prevention conditions, enjoying the ability to move your flock across state lines without additional salmonella and AI testing, minimizing the risk of bringing salmonella contaminated eggs into your home, having access to best management practice. And a big benefit is that you can receive up to 100% indemnification if your birds are destroyed 
due to avian influenza. A new addition to the NPIP that I would like to highlight is the NPIP Biosecurity Principles Program. This program contains the best management practices and principles and is designed to prevent the introduction and spread of any type of infectious disease. Large commercial and small backyard poultry operations can take these biosecurity principles and apply them by developing a site-specific plan for their operation. These biosecurity principles include an auditing tool for the commercial operations to ensure their plans are designed appropriately to prevent the introduction and transmission of disease. It's important to remember that what you do with your flock can affect all, even those that are miles away. In order to prevent spread of disease, the NPIP has identified 14 biosecurity principles for rain poultry. Implementing stronger biosecurity practices encompasses three main areas of focus. First, creating structural barriers and maintaining them. For example, keeping your chickens and coop within a fenced run. Second, instituting operating procedures and policies that reinforce good biosecurity. And third, ensuring biosecurity is an everyday, every time effort. USDA has begun the full rollout of communicating the 14 NPIP principles, biosecurity principles, to all growers. This expansion began in the fall with guidance on three of the 14 principles. First, actions relating to personnel, meaning anyone who comes in contact with your flocks. Second, biosecurity practices related to preventing disease resulting from contact with wild birds, rodents, and insects. And the third point USDA provided extended guidance on for all growers related to preventing the spread of disease through the use of vehicles and equipment. USDA will continue to provide guidance on additional principles through 2020. Another biosecurity principle discusses replacement poultry. We are introducing guidance for this principle today. Replacement poultry are when any birds are added to a flock. Starting out with healthy poultry is the best way to keep flocks safe from disease. You can bring disease to your flock by adding infected or diseased birds to a flock. It's important to remember that birds, even newborn chicks or ducklings, can carry disease and germs, even when those birds appear healthy. Back to you, Andy. Thank you, Joanna. The most important thing to remember about the MPIP replacement poultry principle is to only purchase poultry or eggs from breeders, hatcheries, and or dealers that participate in the NPIP program. For starting or adding to a backyard or exhibition flock before buying, Make sure that the poultry you purchase have been tested for the same disease that your current flock has been tested for. If you purchase poultry in person, check for signs of good health and approximate age 
do not purchase birds that appear old or unhealthy. If you purchase by mail order, make sure that baby chicks have been vaccinated. Check which vaccines are needed in your area based on past outbreaks and compare that to which vaccines the hatchery has administered. Dr. Wood, please review how this principle applies for commercial growers. This NPIP principle works the same way for commercial growers as it does with backyard poultry. Only add replacement poultry from health monitored flocks that are in compliance with the NPIP regulations and program standards. When looking for replacement poultry on the NPIP program, you can request a copy of the hatchery or source farms biosecurity protocols. Back to you, Andy. When you bring new birds home, quarantine the new additions for 30 days. Check for easing, coughing, nasal drainage, swollen eyes, mites, lice, and other health issues daily. This includes birds that you purchase from hatcheries or ones that you buy fairs or shows. After new birds are combined with your existing flock, check the original stock daily for any signs of illness. The stress of new birds to an existing flock can bring on an underlying illness you never knew they had. To prevent bullying, add young poultry, started poultry to your existing flock when they are all about the same size. Be sure to clean and disinfect tools, cages, and any other equipment used for transport. Dr. Wood, please describe how new birds should be brought into commercial farms. Always transport replacement poultry and equipments and vehicles that are regularly cleaned, disinfected, and inspected. Make sure adequate biosecurity protocols are in place for equipment and personnel involved with moving replacement poultry. The tractor trailer carrying the bird should follow premises entry biosecurity protocols when entering the farm. Anyone loading or delivering poultry should wear site-specific clothing. Same for anyone loading poultry cages into the trailer. All should wear site-specific clothing or should not enter the line of separation, known as the LOS, that separates the poultry from unclean areas. Minimize the risk by, of disease by making sure that people transporting birds in cages from the truck to the poultry house wear clean clothing and footwear. Use a dedicated foot bath if available and or remain outside of the line of separation. Empty cages should be disposed of in a safe manner or returned to the trailer and then cleaned and disinfected before taken to another site. Andy, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, Dr. Wood. Warmer weather requires special attention to biosecurity for all poultry owners. With migratory season, chick season, and show season, your flock is more vulnerable to disease and extra precautions are important. First, pay attention to wild birds, rodents, and pests. Keep these away from your flock with proper enclosures. Make sure your poultry house or coop receives regular and thorough cleaning and disinfecting. Clean up spilled feed or spent litter as quickly as possible. Make sure you wash hands and provide foot covers, boot covers, which is preferred, or scrub your boots before and after entering a poultry area. Designate special clothing for poultry care. Clean and disinfect tires and equipment before moving on or off the property. Do not borrow tools or equipment, and make sure you properly care for eggs. Practicing good biosecurity every day is the key to healthy flocks. To some of our main points so far, always purchase birds from an NPIP participating hatchery. Set any new purchase birds for at least 30 days and watch the flocks for signs of illness when they are united. 
know the signs of disease and report them immediately. Disease outbreaks among poultry are devastating. Protecting the health and safety of our nation's poultry must be a top priority for all flock owners. In addition to the many people across the country who now raise birds in their backyards, the U.S. poultry industry is one of the largest in the world and an important sector of our agricultural economy. If U.S. poultry are exposed to highly contagious diseases like highly pathogenic and influenza and virulent Newcastle disease, the impact on our economy can be severe and even international trade can be affected. That's why practicing biosecurity is crucial. Dr. Quinn, can you talk more about the importance of biosecurity practice? Absolutely. Biosecurity essentially means protecting or safeguarding life. It involves using common sense practices to protect your poultry and birds from all types of disease agents, viruses, bacteria, funguses, or parasites, doing everything possible to protect your birds from infectious diseases like virulent castle disease and avian influenza, preventing disease-causing germs from entering your premises, preventing disease-causing germs from leaving your premises and spreading to your neighbors. We saw how quickly disease spread and the impact it had on backyard and commercial poultry with avian influenza outbreak in 2014 and 2015, and with the current virulent Newcastle disease outbreak in California. Implementing stronger biosecurity practices encompass structural barriers and good biosecurity operating procedures are essential to protecting your flock as well as your neighbor's flock. And remember, to be effective, follow your biosecurity practices every day, every time. It is always important to know the signs of illness and report them immediately in order to prevent your flock from spreading disease. Extra vigilance is especially required whenever you introduce new poultry to your flock. Knowing the signs of disease can aid in getting quick, proper care for your birds and reduce any bacteria or disease spread. When checking your birds, look for following signs a sudden increase in bird deaths in your flock, sneezing, gas for air, or a nasal discharge, watery and green diarrhea, a lack of energy and poor appetite, a drop in egg production, or soft or thin-shelled misshapen eggs. And building a relationship with your veterinarian can help you maintain a health lock. There are several immediate steps you must take if you suspect disease in your flock. First, immediately quarantine any birds that show signs of this. Second, call your vet, APHIS, or state officials when you see unexplained signs or illness. The APHIS number is shown on this slide, 1-866-536-7593. If you are a commercial grower, follow your company's guidance for disease in your operation. I'll turn it back over to you, Andy, to review the resources available to help growers practice good biosecurity this spring and throughout the year. Thanks, Joanna. The APHIS Defend the Flock website has six checklists, including a new list for handling replacement poultry, 
as well as those for cleaning and disinfecting, proper practices for personnel, vehicles, equipment, as well as avoiding wild birds, rodents, pests, information that is especially important for spring. At the APHIS Defend the Flock website, you can also access a Know Your Numbers card. This is a handy place to keep the phone numbers for your local vet, extension service, and the USDA toll-free hotline. Videos, prior webinars, other resources. This spring, APHIS is introducing a new e-newsletter to keep you up to date about best practices in biosecurity, as well as tips and resources. Through the newsletter, you will get to meet the veterinarians and other professionals at APHIS who help us keep the nation's flock safe from disease. To sign up newsletter, go to the URL shown here. Click on the red envelope on the upper right of the APHIS homepage. Click on the plus sign next to Veterinary Services to open the topic list. You'll also be prompted to choose the type of subscription that you want and enter your email address. Click the box for Defend the Flock e-newsletter from the drop-down menu. You will also have the option to sign up for other newsletters as well. Now I'd like to turn the presentation over to Dr. Nichols to take us through some of the resources available through CDC and talk about human and bird health. Thank you, Andy. Owning backyard poultry can be a great opportunity to learn more about where our food, such as eggs and meat, comes from. It's important to keep both your backyard flock and your family healthy if you own poultry. Salmonella is a germ that poultry can carry in their gut and still appear healthy and clean. However, this germ can cause people to get sick. CDC estimates that over 1 million people get sick with salmonella every year. Poultry might have salmonella germs in their droppings and on their bodies, including their feathers, feet, and beaks, even when they appear healthy and clean. These germs can get on cages, coops, feed and water dishes, hay, plants, and soil in the area where the birds live and roam. Germs can also get on the hands, shoes, and clothes of people who handle or care for the birds. People who have contact with items like coops or water dishes in the area where the poultry can live can get sick without actually touching one of the birds. Children younger than five years, adults older than 65, and people with weakened immune systems are more likely to have a serious illness from salmonella. Since 2000, CDC has investigated 76 salmonella outbreaks. This includes 5,128 illnesses, 950 hospitalizations, and seven deaths. This is why it's so important to always wash your hands with soap and water right after touching poultry or anything in the area where they live in Rome. Adults should supervise hand washing by young children. And if soap and water are not readily available, we recommend you use hand sanitizer. Another important tip is that you don't wanna let poultry inside the house especially in areas where food or drink is prepared, served, or stored. You can also set aside a pair of shoes to wear while taking care of poultry and keep those shoes outside of your house. Stay outdoors when cleaning any equipment or materials that are used to raise or care for poultry, such as cages or feed or water containers. And don't eat or drink in the area where birds live or roam. We recommend that you don't kiss your birds or snuggle them or touch them to your face or mouth because of the risk of salmonella. 
households with young children, adults over the age of 65, or people with weakened immune systems need to carefully consider the risk of salmonella infection before purchasing poultry to start a backyard flock. When having backyard poultry and collecting eggs, it's important to remember the five C's. First is keep the coop clean. You wanna maintain a, a clean coop, cleaning the coop floor, nests, perches, egg boxes, and doing so on a regular basis will help keep any eggs clean. Next, you wanna collect eggs often. Eggs that spend a significant amount of time in the nest can become dirty or break and cracked eggs should be thrown away. Next, clean eggs with fine sandpaper, a brush, or a cloth. Don't wash eggs because colder water can pull bacteria into the inside of the egg. Cool eggs by refrigerating them after cleaning them, and cook eggs thoroughly. Raw and undercooked eggs can contain salmonella bacteria that can make you sick. If you're looking for additional information, we have some on the CDC website, including infographics that can be printed. Back over to you, Andy. Thank you, Megan. You find the new home for the USDA APHIS Defend the Flock Public Education Program at aphis.uda.gov forward slash animal health forward slash defend the flock. Be sure to check out more helpful information on our social media channels. If you're an educator and with youth organizations or programs, or you're looking for training materials, we'd love to share our campaign view. Contact us via social media or through the website. This presentation along with answers questions will be available for download from the defend the flock website in the next week or so. Be sure to follow Defend the Flock on Facebook and Twitter to be notified when the presentation is available. And use the hashtag Defend the Flock when sharing or posting information to help us spread the word. There are lots of resources available to make sure you practice good biosecurity every time, every day. Here are the publication, you can find more information about things we've discussed today. You can also find organizations in your state and community that can help you keep your birds, your farm, and your bird loving family safe and healthy. And before we go, we'd like to thank USDA and the Center for Disease Control and Prevention for hosting this webinar. On behalf of my co-host, Dr. Crislin Wood and Dr. Joanna Quinn of USDA, APHIS, and Dr. Megan Nichols from the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, and me, Andy Schneider, the Whisperer, thank you for joining us, and let's keep our poultry healthy together. <laughs>